It's pointy. Yeah, thank you. Wow, so beautiful. In this video, I'm going to be vlogging at the most expensive hotel in the world's in the cheapest in country. The evening is more beautiful. In the evening, it's more beautiful. Well, yeah. I think I came at the right time, you know? Little gym, little birdies. This is our gym and spa and a swimming pool. Okay, I think it's too cold to swim. Even I'm, I'm not going in for that today. But before we get to the Metropole Hotel, we're gonna do a full walking and eating tour in the old quarter of Hanoi at the most famous food spots. It is Pampoo Bar. Beautiful, thank you. It's my brother, let him show We are right in the heart of Old Town. It's a block from Ong Kiam Lake and we're gonna to go to King Roti, which is a beautiful little dessert shop. It's probably loud and crazy here. We are stuck in the middle of Hanoi traffic, but they make these gorgeous little baked buns. They're less than a dollar and they're delicious. If we can make it through this maelstrom, we will get you there. Didn't get any good shots of it, but the baking process here is pretty beautiful and unique. So they were sold out of my favorite ones, which are like coffee flavored, but each bun is actually like filled with the goopy stuff and then popped with this little spiral of cheese that's sweetened and then baked on and forms this ridiculously beautiful crust. They're so delicious, man. You're gonna get super fat because they're really buttery and rich, but they're yum. I kind of got a decent shot of it here, like when I pan over, but you don't really see the effect of what she's actually doing. It's this like delicious baked icing. Coffee. Coffee. No. No. Coffee. 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 Whatever, eventually I figured it out and I just got a couple chocolate ones. They're still delicious and they're like 10K, which is maybe 30 cents or something. Let's dig in this road to see if we can find a spot where we're not gonna get absolutely crushed by traffic. This is one of my favorite sweets to grab in Hanoi. They just swirl a little bit of icing on top and then bake. This one is gonna be stuffed with a little bit of chocolate, I think. It's a little bit sweeter. They also do a nice one, it's sold out right now. But it has like a coffee butter swirl on top. Let's see how this is. Mmm. Oh, it's so yummy. Perfect little snack. Just goop it. Oh. I lost the stuff. I lost the chocolate. Fuck. King Roti is so good, less than a box. Alright guys, I'm recording this a second time because I'm a moron and I just left my microphone turned off. But basically I was going to tell you that Hanoians will try and run you down and kill you with their motorcycles. They do not care at all and this isn't a joke, I'm being dead serious. Or if it's funny, it's like a Seinfeld way. You just got to stick your arm up and then like try and give them cut eye and not slow down. Because if you go backwards, they won't see that coming and they'll hit you. And like, that's just basically the role here in Hanoi. I've been with my parents before who are elderly and use like a cane and a walker. And the Hanoians did not care at all. They don't slow down an inch or give for anyone. You gotta love it. So we're coming up to like the main intersection right by Hong Kiam Lake. It's like a big, huge turnaround. There's a couple massive cafes and bars above it. And it's also known for tons of tout. But the nice thing is that during these holiday times, they actually shut down the street around the lake and traffic here, as you've already seen, is insane. So it makes it a lot safer and a lot more fun to be able to walk around the lake without uh, almost getting killed by bikes and cars. Hello. Hi, Sun Chao. Okay, so you should also know that like local people don't really go out that much in the middle of the day. So this lake is like absolutely packed at dawn and after dusk. 
So midday like this, when it's chill, is the best time to go unless you want to get totally swarmed by packs of local tourists, joggers, runners, couples on dates, and in general, just like a teeming mass of humanity. When I came here with my parents, they literally didn't want to leave their hotel room because you could not walk around this lake. It was like being in Golden Week, China, during the absolute insanity when people are just straight up fillets, sardines, in a tin, pressed together, packed on salt. This is a classic old temple in the lake. I think it's about a thousand years old, sitting in the middle of Hong Kiam, and you can see that beautiful little scenic bridge, that is like the picture spot. And on this holiday weekend, Christmas Eve and a Sunday, it is packed with local people hanging out, tourists, women coming to take photos. The beauty of Hanoi. <laughs> Hidden charms of beautiful Hanoi. Local girl shows me ultimate food tour. Yeah, so we're actually headed to a hem, like a tiny little alleyway just off the lake, whereas there is a famous old bo shop, and we're gonna get a bowl of the classic sizzling beef garlic. <clears throat> traditional Hanoian pho. So we're about, I think we're about 100 meters in there, somewhere up through this mess of people and down a hidden alleyway. If you can, it is like definitely worth it to come here on the weekend or a holiday when the road is closed down because it is usually super dangerous and treacherous just to cross this street. Even though it is one of the, you know, sort of more popular tourist destinations, they're usually bikes just like absolutely ripping by. This is also where Bourdain filmed his his famous episode of Hanoi where they like knobbed up a GoPro on a motorbike and he drove loops. He's actually driving loops around this like tiny little oval where people work out and jog in a very touristy part of town. And uh, sweet, I think I talked just enough to last us to get to Pho Tin here. It's uh, got a bit of a lineup outside, but hopefully we'll be able to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> What a first impression. This alleyway yeah, was filthy, but straight up Hanoian. That probably means the food's good. And look at it just packed with locals. Little deep fried breadsticks. That's so good. Yeah, the brisket looks really nice. It's like the classic cooked brisket and raw beef, so it's a nam Looks really yummy. Ciao. All right, bonus tourist note. This sign is also implying that Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un have had this soup. Ooh. Served up to the meeting. Oh, look at this brisket. Wow. Woo, looks good. Whole thing. Come on on. <laughs> wow. That is a big delicious hunk of meat. So you can see the whole process, and that brisket is just ending up in those beautiful paper-thin slices, perfectly cooked and tasty, ready for a bowl of soup. Oh, 
Interesting. So we're paying for a deep fry bread separately before we get the soup. But I guess it's just so busy here that they're taking cash up front. This looks super delicious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got bits of the raw beef in there, literally just like cooking in the steam, and then also the like long, slow cooked brisket. This looks absolutely delicious. What was that? Some hot sauce and some lime in there. Do you want to eat the breadsticks too? Yeah. So good. There's like a delicious fried cooler. And the soup is hot, spicy, really rich, beefy broth. The spicy and the flavoring and everything is just like way cleaner, simpler, straight up deep broth. Not so much like what you get in Saigon where it's a lot fishier, a lot more nut plum and also a lot more sugar. A little nut plum. Yeah. I mean compared to the bland, really bland water down for near our place. Yeah. And also the thin place. It's a bit salty, too salty for me. This one is too salty? No, no, the thin place near oh, our, yeah. our, our place. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's too salty, but that's good. Yeah, it's just strong. Like the broth is really clean, right? Yeah, it is. I think it's delicious. It's really like the brisket and the broth and the star here, but it's like, I mean, this to me is just like the classic, yeah. the epitome of pho uh, in Hanoi. Even though it's obviously packed and full of tourists and it's like a known spot. But it's been around for decades, forever, right? Like, yeah, to me this is strong. This is like a solid like 9.0. It's incredible. Are you satisfied? Mm. Wow. Let's get one more look at that broth and then cut. Alright, this is the part in the video where I tell you we felt really guilty right now because we didn't have our two children with us. So when we saw these kids having fun and doing cute stuff, we basically had to admit we were bad parents, being selfish and trying to get a little, you know, fun time in, away from the kids, smashing foot, expensive hotels. All right, we found proof in Hanoi that children will in fact do anything, including pick up sticks. <laughs> kids look like they're having fun. A little impromptu game of Jenga in the middle of the street. And we're about to head over to Hanoi's oldest and most famous ice cream shop, which is just around the corner from the lake and by a big, beautiful luxury mall. For those of you who want to get some Prada and Gucci, you can get in on that side of town too. Now's as good a time as any to start talking about this cost of living thing. Vietnam might not technically be the world's cheapest country, but it's dirt cheap. An inexpensive meal is two bucks US. This is all over YouTube. You've seen a million two dollar videos, including on some idiot who calls himself Noodlehead's channel. Just for an example, that's about 1,000 of the percentage of a meal in New York. What does that mean? Well, it means a meal for two bucks in Ho Chi Minh costs about 25 bucks in New York City. A beer's still a buck. A kilo of rice is under a buck. And a pack of cigs is a buck twenty-five. So, right next to Old Quarter is the French Quarter, and it has that classic New Orleans vibe. I mean, these beautiful little balconies, gorgeous wrought ironwork, and hanging flowers definitely makes you feel like you're in the Big Easy.
don't think I forgot the title of this video. We are going to the Metropole Hanoi, and just for reference, if you want to skip ahead and check, this ice cream shop is like literally 200 meters from the hotel. And later on in the video, so like whatever, 10 minutes for you, or like six hours for me, when I'm on the back of a grab, we're gonna take a beautiful little motorbike tool through this exact street once it's reopened and the sun's going down. It's beautiful and it's pretty crazy that it's a thousand times more expensive. So this is Kem Chang Tian, which is the oldest ice cream shop in all of Hanoi. Been here for about 65 years. So we'll get in there and grab some food. Let's see if we get right inside if we can get a better view here. Maybe not, maybe that's just it, that counter service there. I have a feeling that if we walk all the way back, there's actually a little sit down area and an ice cream bar that we can find. Yes, here it is, and it is packed, oh my goodness. We're gonna try out the taro root. It's like a purple starchy kind of thing. Very popular in desserts in Southeast Asia. And what looks like matcha, but my wife promises me it's actually young sticky rice. So it's like a green rice flavor. And they're about 15K each, so 70 cents. Mm. It's pretty good. Like, knowing how sweet and ridiculously sugary a lot of things can end up being in this country, as far as desserts go, this is like pretty chill. It's got a lot of creaminess, a little bit of hint of matcha, and that's it. You wanna swap matcha for taro? That's the rice ice cream. We're gonna swap. Mm. The taro one is, I think it's actually a little too subtle for my Western taste. It's just very plain, very simple. But a gorgeous color, a little bit of coconut milk flavor. Oh yeah, pretty yummy. And for the price, you can't beat it. These are 50 cents each, so two sticks for a single dollar. Oh yeah, I love her. My wife's dying because a little kid just asked in Vietnamese, asked her mother why my wife is Vietnamese but her father is a foreigner. So, you do the math. We're only like nine years apart. I don't think it's that bad. Do I look like her daddy? I'm going to make her call me daddy. NSFW, too much information guys. Time to cut. But. Strong recommend. The matcha ice cream is good. It's like a solid 7.5 out of 10 and at 50 cents, can't be beat. We decided to stop for coffee. It's, I mean, pretty chill place when you're at home camp in Oak Quarter. And we basically just flew up here to stuff our faces, eat as much food as we could and chill out in a really beautiful hotel room. So the coffee is actually the most expensive thing we've had so far. The pho was like less than three bucks. It was 60K, so maybe like $2.40 or 50 cents, depending on the exchange rate. The ice cream was 30K for two, which is like a dollar and a quarter. So like we're out 375 total before the coffee. And then we just kind of walk around town until we get this notion to look for pillow dumplings, which are absolutely amazing. And for a minute, I thought we weren't gonna be able to find them, but well, I mean, you'll see. Anyways, if you don't like the ASMR food stuff, skip ahead, go to the end, find the hook, watch the expensive hotel. These are snails, by the way. This is a alt restaurant, they're like, 
cleaning off snails on the street. I don't think we're gonna have any help in Hanoi. It's more of a Saigon thing, but. That's a famous uh, place. That is a famous place, Hop Chang. Here first. They're known for boiled snails. For boiled snails. I think too, there's a lot of dessert places, seeing some cam, some ice cream, and some che. But I'm sure if we keep looking, we're gonna be able to find a place doing pillow dumplings, it's like a little deep fried That's snack. That's the cost of living thing. London is like 631% more expensive for food, 540% more expensive for beer, and an absolutely absurd 700% more expensive for a one-way ticket on a bus. Flying is cheap in Vietnam too, and I'm talking London, Canada, the crappy one. Classic Vietnam traffic, people on both sides of the streets, everyone honking, nowhere to go, a full sea of bikes. And then, in the midst of like utter chaos, he can stumble upon a beautiful old temple like this. Back into the madness, just like that. Back onto the street and into the chaos. And the ball cap goes back on. So after like literally an hour of walking in circles through these maze-like streets, voila, there she is. The magician, the pillow dumpling maker. This lady has magic hands. Yeah, I guess. All right, we think we've found it. Some hidden pillow dumplings. I only see Bang Tom and Bang Boy, but she's going into the back. Somewhere deep down that hidden alley, there are pillow dumplings. Let's go in the deep fryer.
sáu năm hộp em ơi ừ năm hộp ấy à năm hộp á All right, so you saw those. They're almost like pierogi style dumplings. Call the pillow dumpling. How do you say it in uh, Viet? Bang koi. Goi. Like a salad bread? No, goi is a pillow. Oh, pillow. There you go. A bread pillow. You can also see she's making a nice spring roll with like uh, woodier mushrooms, some carrot, and looks like pork and shrimp. Glass noodles as well in there. Mm. The full, full stages. Stage one, two, three, four, five. Then a deep fried spring roll in your mouth. So we have to try at least one of these spring rolls. We know it's everyone's favorite. Hot off the grill, super deep fried, delicious. Looked really tasty, had a bunch of carrot, glass noodles, wood mushroom, all that yummy stuff. Let's get a bite. Oh. Mm. Really nice sweetness from the carrot and the mushrooms, a bit of ginger in there, a bit of garlic. Very simple. So traditional. Classic rice paper roll spring roll. Fine quo. Wanna try? Oh, so that's the trick. What's the trick? I have to fold the rice paper and then fold it on two sides. Right? And then fold it again. Hold on, right? Một ngày chị bán tầm bao nhiêu cái nem chị? Bình thường là chắc khoảng 1.000 cái. 1,000 spring roll per day. Mm. Còn ngày lễ thì sẽ nhiều hơn. Ngày lễ nhiều hơn. Vậy mà on normal days is only about 1,000. On holiday it's on Tết, it will be much more. Tết của truyền của Việt Nam mình ấy, thì yeah. cả bạn cái. Cả bạn cái. Wow. Be up until 10,000 spring rolls a day. So, Auntie's selling that. on a slow day a thousand yeah. spring rolls a day, on a busy day up to 10,000 a day, she says, which is incredible. It means over a thousand an hour. But watching her roll, she's banging them out. Like, yeah. e Oof. impressive. Cheers. Thank you, Auntie. Yum. So let's get a look at our pillow dumpling. This thing is probably scorching hot inside. Yeah, it's definitely like a samosa or like a pierogi or a more uh, pastry style thing, but let's have a bite. Who knows what's inside? Mmm. Oh. It is super hot. Um, I feel like it most resembles like something Latin American, like almost like a, what are those things from Peru called? Not a quesadilla. Enchiladas? Not an enchilada. Oh God, there's a really popular one in Toronto I go to all the time. I 
mine. It's going. Beefy. Empanada. Oh, thank God. Yes. It's like just like an empanada. As someone who's lived in Latin America and spent tons of time eating Latin food. Yeah, increíble. Provecho. Este delicioso. And it really reminds me of a empanada. Let's get a look. We got to look at the whole one. So, that is it. It's like the Asian empanada. Definitely. Pillow dumplings. Bang boy. This is so good. Highly recommend. Like, solid 10 out of 10. All right. We have been eating so much. We are getting our third classic Hanoian breakfast now. So we're headed to a soy place, which is like a sticky rice dish. And along with pho and bang quo, it's probably the most popular breakfast you can get in Hanoi and Vietnam. So excited to check this out. And I think it's just around the corner if we don't get smashed by a bike walking through Old Town. I'm not gonna dox or anything weird, but that lady over my shoulder was giving me bad vibes. She like said something to me about not putting her in the vlog, which you can probably hear if you listen, but like, who cares? No one's gonna see the vlog, lady. I mean, really, that's a bit much. Anyways, I guess I did dox her now, and she kind of got her weird Freudian wish, but most importantly, the soy place is up ahead on the corner. That's soy with an X, folks. Sticky rice. Survive the crazy traffic of Hanoi and get delicious eats. For a dog. Whoop. 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 Ah, and there it is. Yeah. 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 I walk by some old or your pain lady. I don't know if you said that. I was like filming street traffic and you just hear, I don't want to be on it. Presumably she means my vlog that no one watches, but uh, you know, I, I, hopefully I have more humility than that. I don't. I don't care if anyone's watching or not, but if you are, appreciate it. Right now, we're gonna get in on the sticky rice, and uh, hopefully, that's why you're watching. What kind of meat? Some little like stewing Odin type meat. There's chicken over there, boiled chicken. This is like stewy meat some Chinese sausage. So we are gonna get the sticky rice, just the traditional with one, like a soy sauce egg, Chinese sausage, a little bit of shredded dried pork, and some pate, I think. So that's the pate right there. We got here, we got some like pickled cucumber action, the iced tea, obviously, a soda chan. Mung bean is underneath here. Yeah, so, mung bean slices. I have to choose like slicing up super fast. Yes. Thinly sliced lap swan, it's like Chinese sausage. The pate, as well as the shredded pork or pork floss. Yeah. And then, your egg. Chinese sausage, the pate, shredded pork, the mung bean in the bottom, and then this delicious looking soy sauce egg. I, uh, I just don't know where to start. There's so much stuff on top of this, you literally like, can't even see the actual soy, the sticky rice. So I'll dig my way into the bottom. Nice. Nice. Oh. Getting greedy with the first bite. There it is. Mm. It is like super fatty and rich. It is really intense. The pate is incredible, but compared to some of the other breakfasts we've had in Hanoi, this is like. Oh man, if I was eating this in the morning, it would slow me down. This is like $4, so it's also literally way more, I mean we got a lot of stuff, but it's way more expensive than any of the noodle dishes we've had for breakfast. There's the actual rice. 
The that's the pate and the sausage. It's good, but uh, but not great. Like seven out of ten. This would just uh, this would knock me out of eight this in the morning. I'm gonna need a nap after this for sure. So many calories in a bowl. All right, next up on our ultimate street food tour of Hanoi. Bang, we're gonna steal everyone else's title because if it works, it works, and that's how YouTube works. We are going to Cafe Zhang, Watch the out. infamous creator of egg coffee. It's probably gonna be insanely packed. It's been here for 60 odd years, 67 years now, and we're gonna order the famous Cafe Chung, and we'll show you how it's done, but basically it's a coffee made with a beaten egg and condensed milk to avoid having dairy. <laughs> How many people? So, I I'm keeping it simple. It is packed in here and super loud, so I'm not going to try and talk too much. But we're getting one egg coffee hot and one egg cacao. So you can do like a chocolate version. Maybe if you don't like caffeine because you sleep really well or you're not an adult, um, or maybe you've been in hiding for the last 500 years when caffeine has taken over the human population. Anyways, fair game. You can't handle coffee, you can't handle coffee. You can get a cacao version. We're about to try both. Ooh, there they are. Fun. Super fast. This place is a well-oiled machine, pumping out thousands of these coffees a day. So let's have a look and then I taste. Close up, close up. One more. I'm actually just getting like change in color. And you, you are supposed to stir these up. You don't stir it up, you literally just get like a mouthful of egg. Should we steal mama's chocolate? Oh yeah, interesting. So the egg chocolate is thicker than the regular Cafe Chung. Here is the Cafe Chung. According to Google Maps, it's been three years since I've had one of these. I'm sure it uh, destroyed my gastrointestinal gastro system, GI, what is it called, your GI tract? That doesn't do so well with eggs. Let's go. <laughs> it's a lot. It's very intense, bitter, robusta coffee flared with insanely sweet sort of like egg custard on top. It's like a float basically. And good. I mean, it's good. It's a it's an experience. It's a Hanoi experience. Chocolate verdict. I think I like the chocolate version better. Let me taste. Yeah, I have to try it. Wow. Oh, whoa, it's very different. Yeah, it's very different, right? The chocolate version has none of the like burnt, acrid, bitter, robusta coffee flavor. Oh, yeah. Like so it's it. actually like, yeah, it's kind of a nicer drink. It's just straight up dessert. Yeah, and there's no, it's not like beefing about being dessert. It's not pretending to be anything else. It is just uh, really, yeah, it's pretty 
delightful, good, delicious treat. So there's your recommendation. Maybe you want a cacao chum instead of a cafe chum. Strong, seven out of 10 on the coffee. I'm gonna say 10 out of 10 on the egg chocolate. It's just delicious. Like, I mean, if this is what you want, if you just want a delicious chocolate drink, this is fantastic. Mom recommends the chocolate drink. Daddy needs more caffeine though because I don't sleep. That's how I make these if you're wondering with two kids and a family and a full-time job. It's by not sleeping. On to the back of the bike and off the Sofitel Hotel Metropole. Finally, a bunch of you probably just skipped ahead to this point in the video, but hey, that's what YouTube's for. If you missed it, up to this point, I've basically been proving you that, yes, Vietnam is one of the world's cheapest countries, and I've done so by eating and drinking a bunch of delicious food and a full walking tour of Old Quarter Hanoi. We had ice cream, pho, coffee, chocolate drinks, egg drinks, sticky rice, all kinds of delicious stuff. And you add up all the prices, 30, 60, 90, 130, 170, plus a coffee, 210, and 85 is 285. I suck at math, but I think 285 is like, 12 bucks, 12 dollars US for an entire ridiculous food tour. Bang, there it is, proof. Now we're on the way to the Metropole. You're gonna see a little hotel tour of how the one percenters in Hanoi roll. Notice the traffic signs as we drive through this part of town. All of a sudden, it's all big brand names we're about to get into that area where it's all gorgeous old colonial architecture. It's impressive stuff. It's French, it's Mediterranean, it's money, folks. So again, on the right-hand side, there's the ice cream spot, as I mentioned earlier, and where we ate. Forget about the Circle K, and boom. Here's my favorite store, Louis Vuitton. Yeah, you gotta love that spot. And next up, we have the uh, United Colors of Mercedes-Benz. A beautiful turnaround on the way to the Opera House. Uh, some very expensive shoes. If you can't tell, I'm just buying time, messing with you here. Uh, actually, though, we are about to go to the Bamboo Bar in the Hotel Metropole. It's a lovely place. I have a full review linked in my blog below. Check out the Opera House, by the way, huh? Juicy. That's what the French people did. Took over the world, murdered everyone, then made them drink coffee and build opera houses. I mean, they did that in Mexico. Like, I'm only kind of half joking. All right, hotel's up on the left here. A lovely young lady is gonna give us a tour. We're gonna see the pool, the deck, and go to the bamboo bar for a Graham Green martini. And if that's not the perfect nightcap to a day in Hanoi, I certainly don't know what is. Bang, there it is, folks. The most expensive hotel in the world's cheapest country. Come on, let's go inside. Hi, Sing Chao Lan. How do I get to the bamboo bar? Bamboo bar, let me yeah. stop you real quick. Okay, thank you so much. Come on. Do you feel cold today? No, I'm Canadian. I like it. I love the weather. What about you? I feel so cold. <laughs> Are you from Hanoi? Yes. Um, I live in near Westlake. Do oh, Westlake? Yeah. Yes. I know where Tejo is. Yeah, sure. I'm staying out there. Oh, it's a very cool neighborhood. Very trendy. Uh, yes. So when you're not now, yeah, you chill out and wear some jeans and like. <laughs> Casual wear. Uh, it's pointy. Yeah, thank you. Wow, so beautiful. Yeah. In the in the evening, it's more beautiful. In the evening, it's more beautiful. Well, yeah. I think I came at the right time, you know. Little gym, little birdies. This is our gym and spa and a swimming pool. Okay, I think it's too cold to swim. Even I'm, I'm not going in for that today. <laughs> it is 
him pupa. Beautiful. Thank you. It's my brother. Let him show you. Take care. Come on up. Hi, right, Michelle. Okay. Just one. The both one, please, somewhere for you. Perfect, thank you. So many, Chef? Please, Chef. Come on. Tyreen. Cool. Rich, delicious, an Epicurean delight. Cheers to Ho Chi Minh and Graham Greene, two of the finest gentlemen of the 20th century. Spies, poets, scholars, impresarios, and revolutionaries. This is how the other half lives. We're at the Bamboo Bar in the Hanoi Metropole, enjoying a Graham Green Martini. It's delicious. And the snack costs about 41 US dollars, so a little over a million dong. In a country where the average female employee makes 7 million dong a month, the average male 8 million dong a month, so about 210 to 240 US dollars and although I'm truly grateful to be here and be welcomed by Hanoians I do think it's important to see both sides of this coin the contrast the high and the low and before you judge think about this side the Prada the beauty the finesse and the neo-colonialism that comes with cold hard cash the beautiful meeting place played host to Obama and Anthony Bourdain, Donald Trump, and King Jong Un. Who I happen to have a great story about. My college roommate, uh, let's call him Axel, grew up in Switzerland. He was the child of a couple of diplomats. And when he was there, there used to be these two uh, Korean brothers. So I was born in 83, so I'm just 40 now. Axel's the same age. And these two brothers lived with an aunt, pretty normal kids, and just told us all these funny stories about them. They had these weird sort of picadillos. And the big one was, the one brother, Kim, was obsessed with basketball. And not, not just American basketball, but NBA basketball, and in particular, Chicago Bulls, and one player, Dennis Rodman. And according to Axel, he wasn't very good at, or athletic. The kid was kind of chubby, he clanked shots, but he loved to play horse and he loved to shoot. And it turned out that, you know, of course, he was Kim Jong-un and became the leader of North Korea. And North Korea doesn't have a lot of allies, but Vietnam is one of them. And the way we came to know that his stories were in fact true and were vindicated was that later on in life, Kim Jong-un brought Dennis Rodman to North Vietnam because he was still obsessed with basketball. So, if there's a moral to this story, it's that all innocence is a kind of insanity. As Graham Greene once said, that's it for tonight. Cheers, I'm out.
Come on, thank you.